It's been almost 8 years Bioshock's last title Infinite was released and this video's purpose is if you should still play this in 2021. Bioshock Infinite is a first person shooter with a really good story and I've played this game 3 times and it still feels fun to me. So I'm gonna share my experience about this game and by the time this video ends, I hope you'll get your answer. First of all, the story is something really unique and very interesting and I won't gonna spoil it for you. But it follows a character named Booker Dewitt whose mission is to get a girl from an island to New York which turns out to be a rocket silo that takes Booker into a floating city above the clouds which is visually gorgeous and stunning. Then it doesn't really take that much time to get along with this daughter-like companion and she is cute. Actually I wanted to say she's always with you throughout this journey. When it comes to the game mechanics, it's not just shooting but you get these special abilities that's called Vigor. You will get them as you progress and learn different tactics by mixing them with your guns and it becomes really fun later in the playthrough. You can make your preferred loadout with these Vigors and they cost swords to use which you can get from vending machines, enemies and also from your companion Elizabeth who throws different items at you during battle. Your arsenal contains a variety of different weapons that can be acquired and upgraded as you progress. You also get all these gears like shirts and boots that gives you different buffs and you can also make your own gear combination. Another good thing about this game is you don't only get a health bar but also a passive armor that regenerates when you're out of combat. Now if you ask me about the difficulty of this game, I would say it's pretty easy. Like most of the game becomes easier as you progress more and more but Bioshock Infinite can be played without even using any vigors and just by using your guns properly. Like I mostly use the pistol and shotgun. So I suggest you play this game on hard difficulty if you want this game to be more challenging but if you also just want to focus on the dialogues and the story then you can go with the normal mode too. Elizabeth also learns new abilities later in the game that makes this game even easier for you. She can use her tier ability to spawn something out of thin air, she can open locks for you and not to mention she throws almost everything she finds like coins, items and etc. Now this is actually good and helpful but it makes the game less challenging. But I think it's because the game also wants you to focus on the story and I don't blame it because the story is actually a good one in Bioshock Infinite. I also like the protagonist's personality as he's like a protective dad to Elizabeth and the antagonist, well I'm not gonna spoil the story as the plot twist of this game is heavily connected with him. There is a good amount of gun variants in this game and also a lot of different enemies. So I wouldn't complain about having more guns or enemies but there isn't any significant dedicated boss fights which I feel was a letdown. I mean you still have some tougher enemy variants but they don't really feel like boss fights or anything like that. The level design of this game is pretty linear but it has some good stuffs for example these skylines which allows you to use your hook to ride on them and it's really fun navigating around these skylines. Now let's talk about the graphics which is really good and being a game 8 years old it still looks visually amazing. I also did not face any lags and the game felt well optimized to me. Now Bioshock Infinite also has a DLC with two episodes and they both have their own story and gameplay styles. Like in Burial at Sea Episode 1 you play as a detective Booker and a different Elizabeth. In Episode 2 you play as Elizabeth and you have to play the game stealthily. I think this is a really good idea to change your playstyle after you finish the core game. You get different locations, different personalities and different guns and abilities which makes the game even better. And why the different Elizabeths? Well, you will understand if you just play the game yourself. Now if you played Bioshock 1 and 2 then you will realize that this is actually not a good Bioshock game that we used to play but a really good story rich FPS shooter. And I also encourage you to see this game as a non-Bioshock game and just play it for that amazing story and the good gameplay. So overall, Bioshock Infinite is an amazing title that emphasizes on a magnificent story, a beautiful location and a good playstyle. On the downside, the levels are linear, the game is easy and there isn't any dedicated boss fights. So is Bioshock Infinite worth playing in 2021? Yeah, absolutely. Even if it was 2030, I would still like to play this game and I really want whoever is watching this video to play this game too. Maybe you haven't played any Bioshock and thinking about playing one. Then you can at least play Bioshock Infinite because Bioshock Infinite is one of a kind. The first two Bioshock games are connected together but they don't have that much connection with Infinite. Sure other Bioshocks are also good but I think Infinite is a really exceptional first person shooter with a story that will make you question a lot. I mean I even had to watch an explanation video to get a better view of the story. So Bioshock Infinite is a must play video game in my opinion. And that concludes the episode of Worth Playing. If you enjoyed this video feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.